This week on Bros, Bibles, and Beer. Why are we blaming the person who's calling it out? Why does that happen in this society? No, here's exactly why. At Stephen Furtick's church, calling him out on stage. If Mark Driscoll sees a man eating a banana, does he have to like avert his eyes? <laughs> Asking for a friend. Serving communion? No, I mean like, like you, a Christian? you broke the bread. Yeah, you said, this is my, this bo- is my body. <laughs> this is, this is my, my body. Jeff, I, no, I'm not hung getting past it. it. I don't... I, I, no one, I'm hung no up one's on arguing against that. No, they're not. No one's arguing right. that that was inappropriate. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bros, Bibles, and Beer. This is Jeff. It's episode 235. I'm joined with Andy and Zach. Andy, how's it going? I let my possessions control my emotions. Zach. <laughs> Millions of people are finding out the uh, words Asherah pole mean. And public school is turning into a prison, or maybe it always has been. <laughs> I fumbled over mine a little bit, but that was a perfect dismount. You that might it. have been our perfectest dismount. Boop. Just stuck the landing. <laughs> Just hit that post. Hey, YouTube watchers, podcast listeners, welcome to Bros, Bibles, and Beer. I am Andy McCrime, joined by Zach Crater and Jeff Pearson. This is a podcast where we talk about serious topics like faith and culture. I'm screwing it up already. That's all right. Serious conversations about faith and culture without taking ourselves too seriously. It's okay. We worked on this. We only practiced it a whole bunch. 14. Because- You're fired. You're fired. I know. Andy. Now I get fired because I'm, yeah. Oh, wait a second. I need you. If I was a professional <laughs> podcaster, if I was getting paid. And we're joined by the one and only producer, Dave Ritchie. Hello, Dave. <laughs> Hello. Thanks for having me back. Yes. Well, you got fired twice. I did. Within the first 10 minutes of the last episode. Which I think is a record. You're overcoming your firing. I'm a achiever. <laughs> Nobody's been fired three times, I don't think. So, yeah. something to work for. Challenge accepted. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, okay. All right, what are we drinking? I'm about to start drinking. Oh, and hey, let's tease it up. We're going we're gonna to be chatting about multiple things. We'll, we'll start with something and see where it goes. But there's a lot of drama in mega church land with uh, Pastor Mark Driscoll getting kicked off stage at the Stronger Men's Conference. I am pumped for that conversation. We'll talk about that um, and other things. But what are we drinking? Well, I just shifted because I was going to drink one of those other beers, but then I didn't want to talk about it on air. That's why I bought them. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Then, okay. Paperback brewing. Oh, gosh. Hold on. Wait, did we get a sponsor? Dave, can we get another sponsor? Can we cut to this real quick? Let me see if I can get this one on the uh, camera Are there here. Aliens on there? Andy's camera? Are there blow up dolls? Dave, you're fired. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> blow up dolls okay. or aliens? This beer is called <laughs> Cowboys and Blow Up Dolls. <laughs> can you see? There's blow up dolls and cowboys on it. And what's the tagline? Uh, cowboys and blow up dolls. This time, latex won't protect them. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> One guy has a gun. There, it's like a Mexican standoff <laughs> between cowboys and blow up dolls. There are boy and girl blow up dolls in here too, or girl blow up dolls that identify as boys. If you're forties and over, and you just think about the movie Airplane way back when, just think blow up dolls. Fantastic pilots. Nobody's that old who listens to our podcast, Jeff. Okay, do you guys put my <laughs> walker somewhere? <laughs> yeah. See my that's hat. a that's an American pale ale, yeah. West Coast style pale ale, and then I have the um, it's uh, a col- collab between Coronado Brewing Company and Pizza Port Brewing Company, El Rolo, or Royo El Rolo India Pale Ale, and uh, which means the Rolo in Spanish. I like the candy. See, si, si, Senor. How is it? Have you tried any yet? And I'm drinking Buffalo Trace. It's <gasps> tradition oh he almost did oh, it he almost oh, oh you got to fool me listener if you were tuned into youtube you would have seen zach almost <clears throat> over pour his beer yeah you're missing out you got to get on the youtubes all right but thanks for listening and watching and let's get to some feedback <laughs> yeah there's some good harmonies there all right, shout out to uh, recent subscribers to the channel Unfriendly Atheists, Miami Kinez 16, Sophia Barnstorm, and Jack and Shaw. These are the best names ever. Actual so- subscribers. Sophia Barnstorm? Is yeah. that what it was? Yeah. 
Wow. That's it, a badass name. Yeah. But we got some uh, first episode. These sounds like Wranglers in a rodeo. All right, next up with the calf rodeo. Yep. Well, maybe they can join uh, Cam Smith. Also sounds like a cowboy. Uh, but a couple couple feedbacks from episode 234 with Courtney Lancaster. Cam Smith underscore not underscore a. Well, it won't work very well. <laughs> Cam S- Smith not a bot is his. Is his not, uh, a bot, uh, not a bot. LOL. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> this is his username. All right. Good job, Cam. But uh, Dave Millsap said, Zatch, are glory clouds and gold dust biblical? I'm I'm so glad you asked. Um, That's a great question. Yeah, yeah. Gold dust, I'm not sure. But uh, I think you can make an argument for glory clouds if the people were following God through the desert, the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire by night and by day or vice versa. So maybe the cloud counts there. And it could bring... Now, rem- Go ahead. Sorry. The argument for glory clouds in the here and now taking place at a mega church for... What purposes? I don't know if, if God's going to show up and do that, but he's not. Seems like he's not doing a lot of other things. So, but maybe he can only do do one cloud at a time, or do like one example of his power at a time. So that's why we're struggling. So I had hard. nothing on the I had nothing on the cloud, but the gold dust. I think Courtney had mentioned on the last podcast uh, that it's just you see something and just like there's just something great about God and seeing something in a moment. I don't know if it's, I think it was during worship or whatnot. And like just seeing that and just going, I, I love God and I love moments like this. And that's, I think there was something in, in that that she had mentioned. Dave, producer Dave, what's the likelihood, listener and, and YouTube watcher, there, if, in case you don't know, Dave also comes from a construction background. Dave, uh, likelihood that it was gold dust or asbestos <laughs> falling <laughs> in the sanctuary. Which one's more likely? What song was being sung and played? Oh, that's a Ooh, good, good one. I question. split the gold dust so you could walk right through. Spirit Fall, I think. <laughs> that's uh, funny. Set uh, of fire. I do. I do appreciate. <laughs> I do appreciate the uh, the perspective of like I don't need to. I don't need to take a stance that it definitely was or definitely wasn't. I'm just gonna enjoy it for what it is. Um, All I right. don't have that stance, but I appreciate that. I'm I'm open to the mystery too, except in this circumstance. I think okay. it was an overzealous pr- person in church production. Fantastic. Who's our, who's who's the next soul? Who's the next soul that dared to write to us? Oh, we didn't we didn't actually talk about his uh, point, did we? Cam Smith. We haven't read anything okay. from him. Here's Cam Smith. It's interesting because I feel like there's a lot in the Bible about being in a spiritual warfare and being on guard. Air quotes. He gives uh 1 Corinthians 16:13, 1 Peter 5, 8 through 9. But to Andy's point, thank you. Uh way te- to pump Andy's ego. Yeah, let's uh let's align some factions here. Cam is on my team. I've drafted him. Uh, but to Andy's point, not everything is some mystical spiritual air quotes sign that we need to define and determine. I like the example that Jeff brought up. Uh Cam, what? Uh a uh, uh, brought up of falling and that's just gravity. Falling is just being gravity. It's not necessarily some deeper sign that we need to determine whether or not it's from God or the devil. Like, yes, the devil's out to get us, but if we put our trust in Christ, as Courtney pointed out, we're held and cherished by God and we won't be plucked from the palm of his hand, John 10, 29. Secondly, God's ultimately in charge and reigns above the devil. In charge, he didn't say in control. I like that. Good job, Cam. Good choice of words. This podcast approves. He, while being in charge, is working all things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purposes, Romans 5, 8. I think we can find rest in this if you accept that principle. If you do not believe that God is either sovereign or that he is good, then I can see things falling apart. Finally, it's not like we need to stand guard against the devil because if we fail, then God hates us and we're out of communion with him. Our relationship with God is only really dependent on whether or not we trust him or have faith in him. Romans, LOL. Which verse is Romans, LOL? <clears throat> Even when we fail, we're still loved <laughs> and cherished by God. Uh, and More Romans. Paul describes his failures in Romans, also Romans. Um, and if you want to see more about Romans, go to Romans. There's lots of Romans. <laughs> we see failure by Peter described in Galatians 2 and... Uh, and as Christians, we're not expected to be perfect post-conversion. 
by trusting in Jesus. See, Zach is a little off put right now because he didn't get team cam. I'll, I'll end it real quickly here. <laughs> by trusting in Jesus, we're clothed in Jesus' righteousness. Surprise, more Romans. <clears throat> and so no matter so how good. much we fail, as long as we put our <laughs> trust in Christ, and that trust will wane at times, we'll be treated as though we were righteous as Jesus. I tend to think legalism is still very prevalent in certain evangelical circles. If you've made it this far, I'd be curious to see if you guys discuss the Protestant idea of the three uses of the law and anti-nominism. We're not going to discuss that today unless Zach did homework. Maybe in the future. Cam. It, uh, we'll do homework and we'll go look it up. Cam, expect to get Calvary mail telling you you're going to hell. So, <laughs> Thanks for the thoughtful feedback. And then uh, one more from Instagram. Jameson writes, who has been on the podcast before, um, way back in the day, he used to have a podcast, not anymore. Um, but he said, you guys are awesome. Way to keep it going. Yeah, I appreciate the- Thanks, Jameson. I like the comments. I like that there's a little back and forth too. I think we mentioned this last time. Folks that are uh, replying to and, and chatting back and forth. I think that's good. Did you Fantastic. just hear something? I heard something. I thought <sighs> it maybe like a wild dog. It did it Jezebel spirit? <laughs> is it the Jezebel spirit? <laughs> at the d- should we be talking <laughs> about the, the door? Je- should we just dive into the Jezebel spirit? <laughs> well, first, whoa, whoa. go ahead. Go ahead. Whoa. Oh, we got rapid fire. <coughs> we got rapid fire. Yeah, we, this is a first. Okay, we don't have a guest, but I've prepared just a little bit of rapid fire. There is a wild dog outside the house. Yeah, there is. It's okay outside though. of the studio. It's the feedback dog. Shut up, Jezebel! <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. he's got the Jezebel spirit. Okay, I, <laughs> I am maturing in my note taking. I now have it on a uh, Toll Roads of Orange County paper. That okay. dog has a sword. <laughs> better. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than a napkin, Jeff. I prefer. Well done. I prefer napkins. Is he gonna swallow <clears throat> it? Okay, you guys, you need to uh, rock paper scissors Rochambeau for who is going to get the rapid fire. All right, Ooh. Andy got it. Well, Andy won. I won. Okay. So, did so Andy- do you want it or do you want to defer? <laughs> it's football rules. I'll take it this time. You're right. gonna take it. Yes. All right. I'll receive it. All right. Okay. Will I you- like to receive. Dave, will you set the timer? <laughs> <laughs> you set the timer at ninety seconds. <laughs> set. Okay. All right. Uh, if the government knew, would they be looking for you? No. Have you ever said in your mind, this is secret sin, and you immediately thought, I could be Mormon? (laughs) No. (laughs) Mormons somehow always work their way into these things. (laughs) You you had me at yes, right up to the end. (laughs) If you could have dinner with anybody in the Bible, who would it be? You get one hour, uh, three hours. Oh, let's go. Let's go with uh, second hesitations. <laughs> yeah, let's let's. Oh, oh, I don't know why Samson came to mind. Why? I don't. I, I. I'm not really sure why, but I thought like, okay, stop. Yeah, and that's his answer, Samson. It was yeah. Just Samson. I don't know. Yeah, but I said why? Who okay. like stronger men? <laughs> Who would you not want to break bread with? In the Bible? Sorry, sorry. In in the Bible. My apologies. Who would I not want to break bread with yeah. in the Bible? Dude. I'd go with the lake of fire. <laughs> That's a who? I'm going to pick one of the pigs that went off the edge of the cliff. You would True. not want to break bread with them. No. One okay. of the legion. And what is your favorite bread? Oh, uh, I like me a good ciabatta unless it's the uh, sourdough that's homemade mm. okay have you ever broken bread and said no pump this nickel? is my this is my body broken for you yes seriously what context serving yeah. communion no i mean like like you, a christian you broke the bread yeah. and you said this is my this bo- is my body <laughs> no, this is this is my, my body 
<laughs> Here you go, this church is, goer. This is, this is my body. This is Andy McCraw's body broken for that's, you. That's how you say it. <laughs> this is my blood. Jesus said, "This is my body broken for you." So we just quote Jesus every week. <laughs> that's what. It, that's how it worked. That's how you do it. <laughs> Next time you're serving communion, say, "This is Andy's body broken for you," and see the reaction you get. Okay, maybe not. That actually, now I just ran <laughs> through my head. That didn't work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a tightrope we're on a tightrope who yeah. knows you we could fall off at any moment oh gosh um are you or have, have you ever been gay no favorite teletubby color uh well if i gave you any answer then it would negate my previous answer i like it <laughs> and, 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 is, and is that gay yeah i do i was set you I up that trap uh wow. well uh horseshoes or hand grenades Yes. <laughs> okay, that's it. Thanks for letting All me right, torment you. Good. All right. I think you passed, Andy. <laughs> yeah, you tested my Bible knowledge of people I'm not supposed to like. <laughs> Samson. That was that was tricky. He found redemption. He became a suicide bomber in the end. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, just, Samson was the first I just suicide bomber. Bike the mic. Ah, oh, so good. All right. Well, okay. thank you. Well, uh, you you teed something up, Zach. <laughs> yeah, I did. And this is... Uh, you guys, this is going to be awesome. This is more amusing than anything. This is not related to Mark Driscoll yet, but it is related to somebody that has a mega church that plagiarized, which Mark has been wont to do allegedly in the past. Ooh. Plagiarized an apology, I think. Okay. He recently uh, went a little bit viral when he made a joke about the men planning their wedding night they've been planning their wedding night their whole life this is coming on the heels of a um a joke about how women men you just go when the w- woman is planning a wedding you go where you need to go you go yep. where she goes you wear what she wants you to wear you, you better say what she wants you to yes. say yes say i do now most people left that context out they just played the second half of the joke which makes it a little bit more salacious where he says but on the wedding night ladies if you want to make your man happy you wear what he wants you to wear you stand where you want him to stand you do what he wants you to do and it was he was trying to make a joke I don't think it's funny and a lot of people like flipped out over it because of you know potential abuse or people that have experienced abuse on wedding nights and whatnot but either way it just it was a lame joke and so he was forced to apologize to it. And this is this clip where this... So that's Josh How- Howerton of Lake Point Church that did the joke and then apologized. And people think he plagiarized an apology by Joby Martin of the Church of 1122 in Jacksonville, Florida from several years ago. And he made a joke about how breastfeeding was gross, apparently. That was related... <laughs> So anyways, <laughs> this is this starts out with the old apology from Joby, and then you'll hear Josh Howerton, and it's side by side a few different times, and it's uh, almost word for word. Yeah, I'm so excited. If you got your Bibles, and I hope you do grab them, we're going to be in Psalm 34, and as you find your way to Psalm 34, I just need to address a thing. I need to address a thing. I'm going to address a thing. Okay. The Bible says in Proverbs 12, 18, that careless words stab like a sword, and wise words lead to healing is that careless words can stab like a sword, but that wise words lead to healing. And what the Bible means in Proverbs 12, when it says careless words stab like a sword, it means regardless of your intent, like if I was careless with a pocket knife and it slipped out of my hand and stabbed you in the face. And what that verse means is that like, even if somebody had a steak knife and they like had the intent to cut their steak and their hand slipped and changed it up a little bit. Wait, pause it for a moment. I need you to hear this. Who is the one plagiarizing? The young so one. The or southern the old accent one? is the Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, the younger one is Josh How- Howerton. And who's who do, who's, who's allegedly plagi- plagiarizing? Josh Howerton, the younger, the younger one. one. This is new. <clears throat> this is from a couple months ago. Okay, I, I like how he did the, uh, the steak changed knife. it up to yeah. a steak knife. Okay, yeah. Okay. And then the the guy, the he gentleman, made it. He made it his own. <clears throat> he, he did. He's stealing like an artist. He did the you know. Yeah. You know when you take a steak. Uh, that's good. He's playing it off. Guilty as charged. Okay, three things. I love you. I love you. I love this church. I love getting this to where do this thing good. together. Oh man! Hey, I need you to hear three things. Number oh. one, I no. love you. No. Look at the way he Listen, says I that. Like church, I love you more oh than you will God. ever imagine. I stay awake thinking about you. I pray for you every day. Like it, you, th- this is the honor of my life. And again, I am sorry. 
And I wanna say thank you. Thank you for the grace that you give me every single week to stand up here and do what I get to do. And I hope by God's grace, I'll get to do this for decades and decades to come. I'm sorry for careless words. I'm sorry about that. And number three, thank you for your grace to me. I want to be doing this with you for decades and decades and decades. I believe him. So that's awesome. Man. All right, that's good. Wow. <laughs> I just oh threw my up gosh. in my mouth. I think you, you, I think you got to yeah. pause it, though. Church, if you got your Bible. Good Thanks. grief. <laughs> I mean, what? How come you can't just say sorry? Like, you you made a joke. It wasn't received well. It probably, you I wanna, know. I want to be a fly on the wall when he's like, Google, how do I apologize in, in Christian terms? Blah, 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 blah. I feel like what he did was he Googled chat GBT. Yeah. How can I apologize and make things worse? <laughs> <laughs> I've got your back. Here you go. Uh, to make it worse. Make sure it's stolen. What's adding to it is the fact that his voice kind of has that. <laughs> Guys, yeah, I'm like, oh, dude, you're weaseling. You're weaseling right now. You got a weasel voice. And both of them, like, I don't like the. And hey, I feel horrible here's, about that. Let's talk about a thing. It's like, are you going to apologize or not? Or, like from the from the jump, yeah. the original guy was like, oh, it's no big deal, but I'm still going to apologize for it. And then the fact that he copied it. We don't have to spend any more time. It on starts it, to not, yeah. It very quickly doesn't feel genuine. Zach, good catch. It feels performative. Way to catch this plagiarism well, out there. I, I got to, uh, I got a hat tip to the Roy's report, uh, which is a church investigating church abuses in general, like reporters, independent journalism, all that stuff. But so, what do you think should happen to that pastor? I, I just hope he's super embarrassed and learns from it and gets a little bit better as a human. Do you think it's grounds for firing? That he's now he's he's now been crass and and dishonest. Do you? Maybe. In what capacity would you? I think he's demonstrated back to back bad judgment, and that's what makes me think. Oh wait a minute, maybe you. Maybe this, is, a, for maybe the this wrong, isn't a good spot for, for the you. wrongdoing, and then using somebody else's apology to yeah. apologize for the wrongdoing. And yeah, it just shows me that that's like that's not a very mature response. That's not something you want in a lead pastor, and so. The best thing for him to do would be like, maybe I need to s step down for a little while and go do something else for a bit. Take a sabbatical and he's taking he's rest. taking some heat online. I'm sure he doesn't look at that stuff too much, but um, but if he does, check it out, bros. Bibles uh, and beer. We're talking about <laughs> you right now, buddy. Kids, but I, I do like that. It's heat. like it's on its. If it's a one off, it's one thing. But if it's it's like back to back things. It it could have just been so easy just to apologize. It's so weird that it would be so word for word. Do we know what what was the wrong? I, I'm sorry. Yeah, he I, said it. The, it was, what was it? Gave he, that off color joke about he, the wedding night. He joked about the wedding night about just <laughs> that's right. Okay, wives so, basically. If you want to make your right. man happy, do whatever they want. Right, which is true. So uh, maybe the maybe it was just. I'll transcribe this apology <laughs> that you can use next week. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it was the the funny and he thought you know i'm just joking around and then he thought it would be if, like if we had him on would he actually say it was supposed to be a funny and then i kind of tried to use a funny thing to do the apology for the funny thing that i tried to do and it played wrong you can almost see it in his eyes if like, he came out his the, face looks like he doesn't believe what he's saying right like, and if he came out a third time on this and said hey i was this joke went way way the wrong way and then i tried to follow it up with another joke and it that second horribly. one was not a joke i uh, that that i don't think that was yeah, a joke yeah that was supposed to be a real apology that was supposed to be real well, if if not is it possible now I that really worry about is it this guy possible that pastors are so sociopathic alike, alike yeah. that they they actually would apologize in the same fashion what do you think the chances are not with the steak knives no <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to answer your own question. <laughs> More like mistake knives. Am Whoa! I right? I just wanted nice. to leave it out there, but he will get a free set of steak knives now. And <laughs> Bros, Bibles, and Beer, uh, Cutco, I think. Cutco yes. knives. Enjoy the Bros, finest. Bibles, and Beer reached out to uh, Josh Howerton for comment, but as of you know, us recording, he didn't get back to us, which isn't true. I mean, he didn't get back to us, but we didn't reach out. He was found That's stabbed why by yeah. a set of steak knives. Yeah. Yeah. It, stabbed in the... By the way, I don't want Biblical my heart. I don't want my comments to be interpreted as you make one mistake, you're out. Yeah. This for me is like a canary in the coal mine. 
you made you made a bad joke that was off color. Okay, dude, we've all we've all said something stupid in, dude, in a moment. Never. <laughs> okay, refer continue. to episode two thirty four, <laughs> listener, if you're interested in <laughs> just <laughs> rapid fire questions. <laughs> the um, but but this follow up is that's that's for me that's like red flag. I'm like, wait a minute, something. This is really weird that you would do this because it's so unnecessary. There's absolutely no reason to plagiarize no. somebody else's. No. So that makes me go, what else? Now now what don't we know? Yeah. Red flags. Potentially. Yes. All right. I don't need to do I don't another know much circle about on that. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. All right. Now. Is there, it time? There was a recent Stronger Men's Conference. Um, Guys, what do we think about Strong Men's Conference? Or just men's conferences in general? We don't even get to be strong. We have to be stronger. <laughs> God. Based on what? Is it just like you look to the person next to you? Well, I think I'm stronger than that. Now, Jesus, I need you, but I guess I got to be stronger here. I can't wait for next year's Stronger <laughs> Conference. I have it on good authority that <laughs> last Dave, year. Dave, you like that one, Dave? <laughs> I do like that one. <laughs> uh, I was listening to the Holy Post, different podcast. At 5 a.m., You, I get all of your, like, Zach's going through the Christian Post right now from 5 a.m. to 5.35. <laughs> Um, last year, Chuck Norris rolled up in a tank. Was it really Chuck Norris, Wait, though? Yeah. He, it was I, real I, Chuck Norris. I thought he was going to hit people. Real Chuck Norris rolled up. The tank rolls up, and then when the hatch opens, out pops Chuck Norris. Or a really realistic, uh, you know, Hold mask. On. Okay, we're telling this story poorly. So Yeah, we are. There's a <laughs> conference this year. There's been some drama around that conference. Yep. It is a men's conference called Stronger Men. And who's running the conference? Uh, John John Lindell. Lindell. No, no, no. Yeah. What's the church? It's in Georgia. Gosh, James dang. River. James River Church. Yeah. <laughs> to give you a sense, what you were saying is to give you a sense of what this Stronger Men's Conference is like. Spectacle. L- last, yes, yeah, spectacle. Last year it was a hair metal band with fireworks <laughs> playing on stage while a tank being driven by Chuck Norris drove over a bunch of vehicles. And multiple people were shooting off. Shooting guns. Guns. Probably. Probably fake, blanks. But yes. Yeah, blanks. But there was like machine guns going. If it on. was Texas, they're real bullets. It's like one hundred percent. Georgia, they're they're more peachy, so maybe they'd uh, and use blanks. I have to admit, I I felt ambivalent in the moment when I watched that because I was like, but if it was us and we were in the desert, like that would be kind of cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> driving a tank over some cars shooting some guns oh, heck yeah. I would want to shoot the tank like use the tank's weapon in the desert yes if possible that's that actually what I was in thinking Texas. in yeah. Texas you can probably do like, that like I hope they blow that tank out of the church okay so that was that's the context uh, I don't I don't fault them for that that's goofy and it's fun and some people are like it's, poking fun at them it's really like look at these these are manly things Tanks, guns, it felt rock t- and roll. It was tongue in cheek. It was so over the top. It was Way obviously tongue over in cheek. The top. Okay. Yeah. And so th- that was twenty three. And now we're fast forward to twenty four. Yeah. This this year, amongst other things, they had I heard there were multiple shirtless episodes, but they there was a gentleman by the name of Alex Magala that took his shirt off and there was a, a pole on a stage. And he did a pretty acrobatic routine. It was impressive, and he's he's ripped. And do you cut. want to do you want to just run the video or? I don't have the video of him doing that routine. No. Um, people have to Google that. I just I, have, I had safe search on, and so <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding. Um, but this guy g- gets up and does a routine that's really theatrical. I think Joe a cross between Joe Bluth and somebody that can actually climb up a pole with his muscles. Uh, and swallowed a sword as well. I don't think while he was on the pole, that would have been really impressive. Okay. He's a sword swallower. Yeah, but he's he's on stage, and he's walking around, kind of throwing his shoulders left and right, like, yeah, look at me. And then, boom, ripping the shirt off. And I'm like, what is going on? It was a little panther on the prowl. I'm like, in his movements. This looks like a Chippendales thing. Wow. Yeah, and next, and he's like gets on the pole a little bit, and then he was that also like Chippendales? Yeah, I don't know. How do you know? Are you sure, you seem to know sword, just a second ago. The so- <laughs> you I've guys, never been so sure of anything in my life. Thank you for calling me out. I do need to know. 
Uh, then he's got the sword pressed up against his face, and his tongue is out, and he the 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 his sword is sliding along his tongue, and then it goes into his throat. Yay! I'm like, what I, in the heck is going on here? I'm a t- totally uncomfortable. Anyways, and apparently uh, Mark Driscoll was as well. So during the, we'll play a clip uh, during the, you can go to the next tab, I believe. Um, so Mark, as he's starting his time to speak, uh, he gets up on stage and he says a, a couple couple of things. Oh yeah, so he's booked. He's booked as a speaker that comes later in the day. Yeah, after he's seen this. Sorry that the video is cell phone footage from the event. We don't have an official feed. Oh, so we do oh, get to see it. it. Okay. We do get to see. We're it. gonna see a little picture and picture and picture. <laughs> That's great. Good enough. Inception. Oh, you had it before. Oh God, Dave. Oh, fired. <laughs> fired again. <laughs> Dave continues to be fired. <laughs> And I want to be very careful with this, and it's not what I want to say. But I'm the gonna. Jezebel spirit has already been here. Yeah, the male spirit. It's up. The Jezebel okay. spirit opened our event. This is a rebuke and a correction of no one. This is an observation. Before the word of God was open, there was a platform. It was a high place. On it was a pole. Pause it. Let me define a couple things first. Also, I- immediately from my perspective, he is so. Mark Driscoll is somebody that used to be, I think, a borderline cessationist, where the gifts of the of the Holy Spirit, the apostolic gifts of the Spirit, like tongues and stuff like that, ceased. Ceased, and they are not for us now. Okay. When he got booted from his church. Um, among the problems were plagiarism, bullying, and abuse. Um, improperly using church tithes to get his book on the bestseller list. If you don't know who Mark Driscoll is, go listen to The Rise and Fall of Mars Hill. That'll that mm-hmm. podcast will give you a sense of who he is. Yeah, that's a really good podcast. Um, so he he sat it out for a while, moved to Arizona, and now has a large church there where he's rebranded himself and. If you want to give him the benefit, I have a hard time giving him the benefit of the doubt personally, just for the record. But if he wanted to, you could say he changed his mind and he now he's spirit filled. He almost came on our podcast. They reached out to us when he came out with his book, Spirit Filled Jesus. That's right. That was when he was relaunching his church and his new book, which is all about like spirit filled they stuff. They canceled like, the week before charism- or the week of. Uh, two days before. Yeah. And then they they canceled us saying, hey, actually, he has a, another commitment. Can we work out a different time? I responded, and there was nothing. So obviously, they maybe listened to our podcast and were like, <laughs> yeah, no. I'll text him. But regardless, they did send us three copies of the book, and I, I perused it, and I was prepared to ask him good questions. Um, but uh, so he rebranded himself, or he changed his mind, and, and he's more convicted about the gifts of the spirit now because I believe his church is a little bit more charismatic. So in this clip, when he's saying a high place, an Asherah pole, he's he's importing his views on spiritual warfare already. It's like you're elevating this What's above he's, everyone. He's, he's reading into this situation maybe more than is actually going on. But uh, What's an Asherah pole? Thank you for asking. I'm glad you did. Um, thank you for ashing. <laughs> let me answer you. Uh, in the Bible, Asherah is both the Hebrew name of a pagan fertility goddess, and some say that Asherah and Yahweh had a little relationship way back in the day. That's ex- I saw a pole. I said, "My what a pole!" <laughs> uh, I walked into the room. It was my what a room, and there was a there was a pole there. Some say it was a big pole. Anyway, that's like, it's fading it, out. It's it getting was, worse. It right. was a huge pull. You oh started goodness. out strong. It's actually a, a decent uh, Gillis. We'll take yeah. a pull on it. All right. You have um, to get raspy. Fertility goddess and the wooden cult object dedicated to her is the Asherah pole. Nearly all instances of Asherah in the Bible refer to a sacred pole constructed by human hands and erected Keep in, it going. in honor of the fertility goddess. I didn't write this, but I... <laughs> 
kudos for using erected. Scripture also references carved images of Asherah, First Kings, Second Kings. Uh, Asher, the term Asherah appears 40 times in the Old Testament. 33 of these occurrences referring to the sacred Asherah poles used in pagan and heretical Israelite worship. The Israelites were struggling with heresy these days. Um, them days. Them days. Oh, only seven instances of Asherah are refer- references to the goddess herself. Okay, it's getting very biblical. I'm getting confused. Asherah or Ashereth, the Canaanite fertility goddess, was the mother of Baal, the supreme Canaanite god of I know fertility, that name. Is that like sun, Baal? and storm. Like Cabal? Sometimes they pronounce it Baal. Yeah, oh, it, looks like, it Baal. looks like Baal. Yeah. I hear, I've heard people say Baal. Baal. Uh, worship of Asherah in biblical times was widespread throughout Syria, Phoenicia, and Canaan. By the way, everybody, you're getting your poll historical definition and yep. then some. Yeah, and if you click, if you look in the show notes, we'll include a link on how to build your own. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll put that in there. <laughs> yeah. mean, if you had told me you were going to talk about that, then I'd be like, yeah, just explain it all. Dave, you had one put in on your wedding night? <laughs> I did. Okay. <laughs> We'll put up the It'll plans nice. uh, so you can 3D print your own Asherah pole <laughs> if you're interested that's in it. Just, just um, and then we'll make sure that we pass your name along to the Lord because clearly you're not a follower. Okay, we got a pole. We got it elevated on the stage. Now, Jezebel Spirit, because you're going to hear him mention oh, yeah. Jezebel Spirit, so I'll just get this out of the way. Depending on one's background and denomination, most often from a charismatic background, the meaning of Jezebel's spirit can differ but we'll go with the most overarching, a disposition or demonic influence that causes to create rifts, that's terrible writing, that creates rifts in the church and in marriages through cunning, deception, and seduction. If there was anybody that was in the audience that was having difficulty, like they're married and they're having difficulty with their sexuality, I don't know, I'm, I'm struggling there. They would have been set off, I would think, in seeing pretty much a man dancing on stage with his shirt off. I'm like, this is not, this is not good. Was now, that the intent? Well, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe we should. We, should we watch we the rest know. of the clip? Yeah, we can keep rolling. <laughs> let's let's roll the that. rest of the clip. Dave, that's a good question. Way to keep this thing moving. Look at Dave putting on his producer hat. I didn't. It's used in a strip club for women. We have the Jezebel spirit to seduce men. Strip clubs. In front of that was a man who ripped his shirt off <gasps> like a woman does in front of a pole at a strip club. Who's clapping? That man then ascended. See, our God is not arrogant. He doesn't ascend. Our God is humble. He descends. <sighs> it's, so pause again. it's a little much. Except for the part where he did ascend <laughs> yeah. into heaven. Well, and also it's like, I don't get the connection. I get like, okay, God is, God descends. He's humble. He, he, he identifies with us where we're at. But to tie this to like, by I, the way, when I watched the video of the guy doing it, I was like, that's impressive. It's an impressive acrobatic feat. Yes, there's some dr- dramatic flourishes. Seriously, never did I well, once he, be like, oh, this is so great. I'm like, this is gay. Well, that this is totally gay. Why are they doing this at a men's conference where they're trying to be uh, a find, trying to find uh, like answers or just help or uh, encouragement to be a better husband, a, a better father, better man? Just and all of a sudden they're seeing this on stage. Is I don't know if it was the opening. I think it was the opening act of the the conference. I'm like, why are they doing this? This yeah. is my, horrible. My question is like, it's less specific to him, although I. Like gay didn't come to mind, but I could see like there's some like homoeroticism to it. Um, I'm sorry if you're ever at a men's retreat and the person gets on stage and and starts dancing around and takes their shirt off, you're like, yeah, uh, I, I, I agree. With, I agree with you. Like, okay, thank but you. But I want I want to put that with like the tanks with all. Apparently, I didn't see the other, other videos. There were other demonstrations of strength and whatnot with men with their shirt off, and it's like. What are we doing? I know this isn't Sunday morning church, so maybe it's a separate category, but it's like, how much money are we spending on this stuff? Like, what do we, why do we need to create these spectacles for what purpose? Forget, like, your question is great, Dave, about 
um, don't talk to Dave. He's what is a what is the intention? Do you think they meant this to be, or was it? Is it one of those things where it's like, oh, this guy does this act. It's a crazy acrobatics. Yeah, get him. Let's have a cool demonstration. And then like they didn't know they were getting what they got. Maybe that that's uh, lazy vetting. That's all I thought about. Probably and we talked about this before. This is lazy vetting, and and also so out of touch with men that you're like we're gonna charge tanks the year before and you know we're gonna play the rock band and we're gonna have a sword swallowing guy on stage i'm like that's not men need very little they need real and that's not real like when you're going to a men's conference you need things that are real that actually like uh, no i need answers because we don't work in like Oh yeah, that's great. I'm pumped up. I don't need to be pumped. Nobody needs to be pumped up for a uh, men's conference. We need we we went there for encouragement and and hopefully some guidance and answers and we're not getting it from sword swallowing and men taking the shirts off. What about when we when we play games of sport at our men's conferences? Like throwing axes. We like to compete. We like to throw things. I like to hit things. I want to you know, it's but do we need? But are you talking about the Greco-Roman wrestling incident? The oil wrestling. What about yeah, that part? That was that was once it, again that it, was gay. It was organic baby oil. <laughs> I guess. <coughs> I I think your first answer is probably the most accurate. I think it was lazy, lazy. bedding. Yep. I think someone was just like, I we were supposed to fill the box with entertainment. <clears throat> we just want to open something up with entertainment. We'll get this guy. Sure, seems good. Uh, double check. Is he a Christian? Yes. Someone someone checked and it says he said he's a Christian. Okay. Yeah. Go for it. That's that's the most likely answer yeah. in my mind. Have we played that all the way through? No, no. we're just getting to the good part. Okay. Um, okay. Where he gets kicked off. Spoiler alert. <laughs> but I just I'm like I don't like the in in general like the spectacle is like dude what are we doing it's so st- a pastor this is this happens pastor drives up on stage on a motorcycle he's wearing a leather jacket oh my god he's such a man he's so great um christmas time let's get a sleigh suspend it from the ceiling and have santa fly in like this these are literal things that happen at these giant churches and it's like so it, it's somewhat similar to the it's John- not enough just to like be it, be like hey yeah, guys it's someone's it's i'm not Bad mouthing. Zach doesn't Ran- like Christians to have fun. This is definitely not <laughs> bad mouthing. That's what you should take away. Uh, Ransom Heart with John Eldridge <laughs> and the men that run that ministry um, because they have done epic things for the last 15, 20 years yeah. at Ransom Heart out in Colorado and and uh, all over the place. Um, but they created a movie and they like it was documentary and like we're gonna go out and be men and they got on motorcycles and they were going out, and like they had fallen <laughs> over in one of the scenes and like oh man it was like courageous and oh my gosh we almost died and then they show that like they zoom out and it's like a two foot slope and there's nothing it's like yeah, it's still like nothing was gonna happen to you just tipped over but they're talking about it like it they were staged. on Mount Everest and they were going to fall to their death. It looks staged. And then by the way, they all drove off together and like <laughs> high fived it, it. And I'll say like, I, I have differences with ransom heart in certain areas, but I know people that literally like were in a terrible spot as a human man and it helped them become a oh, better man. There's a great heart to that ministry. Um, yeah. And so, and we have no idea about the rest of what happened during this conference and if no. the, what else, what else was valuable, but when at least taken out of context, this one feels weird. Yeah. And I, I want to be, um, we need to fat, we need to get, we, into, we will, but yeah. I, I don't want this to seem super salacious and gossipy. It, it's, we're deconstructing something, but I promise you there was content there that, would be beneficial sure. for people. It, this yeah. isn't a like this shitty thing happened, so therefore throw it all out. Or, or but, because I hate Mark Driscoll, I don't hate him, but it's close. But uh, it's not about the con. It's not about the content. It's about um, okay. You have a uh, seven day uh, getaway and with your wife, and the six six days or seven days you hang out with her, but one night you went off and you slept with somebody else. It was like. It's, you know, it was about those, you know, six and a half days that you're with your wife. It's like something happened at this conference that is not good. And it is, it's cancerous. In my opinion, it's cancerous to like what is happening. Cause this, 
this lack of um, vetting and and understanding like who's representing us, that will bleed into your ministry, your church, and the people you hire. And it's like if you hired him, like who else are you hiring? And also if you're not if you're not a Christian and you or you used to be a Christian or you're on the bubble and you see you're brought to something like this, it's like mm-hmm. what's happening and not just not just the guy. It's, That's not their like, target market. This this is true. Yeah. Well maybe it is. I don't know. All right, let's let us let us let us let the whole clip run through. Sound good? Let's get through the rest of it. Yes. He swallowed a sword, and Jesus cried. Okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. So oh, can you, can you got, go, can, go back a second? Yeah. So you can't really hear it very well. This is where the, the head, pa- John, John Lindell. Lindell, says that's enough. You're done. Like, you're yeah, done, Mark. You're done. Back a little bit more. A little bit, a little bit. Keep going. Beep. Like. Whoa. You're fired, Dave. If you didn't know before. And then he swallowed a sword and Jesus cried. Mark. Okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. Thank you. You're done. You're done. Puts his hat back on, walks off. <clears throat> let let that run. Some applause, some booze. Uh, Lindell's coming back on stage. This is John Lindell. The person take, take it. Some booze in the crowd there. Yeah, there are. But who's it for? So he plays the Mark, or the, the Mark, the John, uh, or Matthew, so many names. I'm mean, saying all the disciples' names. Just say Matthew Roman. Matthew 18. Just say Romans, Romans, and Cam will be happy. <laughs> Got you, dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is, uh, oh, by the way, in case you're listening, I, I didn't realize that, but there's a giant picture of a motorcycle yeah. behind. On the, <laughs> on the screen like During it's all massive of this. so it, it's a movie theater screen it's huge the the spectacle the spectacle is incredible i mean yeah. it's, it's just incredible but he plays the bible card against mark or yeah driscoll it feels like so, mad max it's thunderdome like the whole setup it's a little weird okay but what does do he do? have a point gosh why Wait, do i have to defend him okay this is like what do you says, have to defend driscoll yes. no no. Or Lindell. No, actually, Lindell. Why do I have to defend Lindell? Lindell has a point. I just talked to him half an hour ago. He didn't say anything about this. And so he's like, I'm feeling like we got ambushed here. Mark comes out. We've invited him to be on stage. We gave him a mic. And he did this. And like, dude, you could have you could have said something. If, and we would have had a conversation about okay, it. Okay, what if he does say something? Then... Then talk about it right then. Yeah, but Lindell probably says, uh, I then... Don't then don't say anything. Don't go out there if you're gonna say that. And then it's like you have one of two choices. It's like, okay, I don't go. Or Mark Driscoll is like, this is wrong. These men cannot walk away thinking this is okay. And Lindell is not bigger than anybody. So who cares if he's the pastor of a church? He is not more important than than the than the Bible, than Jesus and God. That's not the point, though. That's not the point that Lindell's making. L- L- Lindell is like, dude, I invited you to come to this thing. He didn't say you shouldn't you shouldn't criticize us or criticize me or criticize the situation. It's the public rebuke. He's like, dude, why didn't you say something to me? I just talked to you for half an hour. And Ma- Matthew 18 is basically like, if if you have something against somebody, go to them privately. If they don't respond... Then you bring it to other people. If then there's no response, then you go public with it. Like there's this, but isn't order. that within the church? Like in the church you belong to, it's, it's just the the church in 
in general. I mean, like I mean, big C. Proverbs twenty-seven five six. Better is open rebuke than hidden love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, and they are friends. Not uh, anymore. Profuse uh, are the kisses of an enemy. That's Proverbs, and it's open rebuke. It's like this is wrong. So which which one is more biblical? I love that. I love that you're using the Bible against the Bible, Jeff. So, so and, Matthew, and also, Matthew doesn't say that he sh- you shouldn't rebuke them. Matthew doesn't doesn't con- conflict with that, but it adds here's here's the right way to go about doing that. And I would side with Matthew seems to be more applicable because it is talking about the local church, like brother to brother, as opposed to uh, Proverbs are it's wisdom literature, which is. It's going to depend on the context, and that's not super specific. Yeah, but this has, for Matthew, it seems like Matthew is more like there's something going on, like, hey, we're friends, and you're doing something that is not good. You've got to stop doing that. And and so we have the conversation, you're not going to stop doing that. And I'm like, I'm going to take you, like... Okay, I'm, let me get me and Andy together, and we're going to talk to you. And if you're yeah. like, no, I, I'm, I'm not backing away from this. It's like, okay, we're going to the church now publicly, and we're going to talk about it. That's when we're in a congregation together. We're, we're brothers, but it's, I mean, Lindell and, and this person that was on stage, they're two different people. Yes, it's the James River Church that's putting this on, I'm assuming. So we're only supposed to do that if we happen to like... Fit. I don't think I, I don't agree with that def- definition. So, G- How about, like, you don't I, agree with can, what? Can I? Read? I, don't, I don't agree with your de- definition of that. It's only supposed to be like, well, yeah, go ahead and read it. But like, only if we happen to exist in some special relationship with each other. There's, I still think there's the open rebuke of proverb. It's like this needs to this needs to come out in that, order to protect. That's fine. Protect you. That's I, but that's what Matthew is saying. Matthew is saying go and rebuke them directly. Once upon a time, you and Tanya put on a marriage retreat, right? Mm-hmm. Imagine the scenario where you wanted Zach to come speak at the marriage retreat. And <laughs> this is already really funny. And Zach gets up, and before he talks, he says, Oh, I didn't mean to open that one. How he complains and calls out something that happened in your marriage retreat. And never said anything to you beforehand. You would be like, "Dude, oh, wh- hold on. Wh- why would you not have even said something to me so we could talk about this?" Okay, I kind of walked through this scenario, the scenario you're posing, yeah. which is parallel to what has happened here at James River. Yeah, and to to me, Lindell has you actually have the ability to either ah, oh, we have made a mistake. Yes. Yes, we. You know what? We were lazy. We'll get to that in this, and it did not. This is not what we had planned. You our, skipped a step, though. Our, our our apologies for this, because there was never has Lindell in all of this uh, public discourse has he ever even questioned. Like I haven't thought about what Marx says, but I think he's just he's wrong and he's trying to tear us down. And this is a brother that's just well, trying to do evil to us. Maybe and, it would have been different if Mark would have come to him first. Maybe, maybe he set things off, and Mark set things off in the wrong direction. Because you think, Lynn, I think, I think, maybe. Dr- I think maybe Driscoll was like, "You're not going to get up there and and rebuke the guy who was on stage because you allowed him because that would hurt you. Your ego's in the way." And I think Mark just was like, I'm, "Probably, I'm going. I'm going to step out and I'm going to say Mark this." Kind of do what Mark want to do. But, Mark, yes, Mark's going to Mark. Yeah, Mark Driscoll does just say whatever he wants. However, he also started off by saying, "This is this is not like there was some preface that he had where he was coming into it softly and not saying like this is John Lindell or James River." It's like what we saw. There was something that we saw here yesterday. The Jezebel spirit's he, he already was, been here. He was measured. He was. He was measured. I'll give him that. He was trying to protect and, and I don't also dis- point out. I don't disagree with the over the overarching just thrust of what what are we doing here? Yeah. Like I, that's I like okay. I like that. I like that Mark called it out. I don't read into it some of the ways Mark's doing. Um there is some excess to his and, description. And the uh I mean you could think of a any number of examples to to reference, but there is like 
it's part of his deal. Like anything bad sexual, it's like blame it on the girls. The Jezebel spirit is a, a feminine uh, issue. It's like, I don't know how that applies necessarily. You could come up with any number of ways to rebuke it. But let me but real go quick, ahead. Okay, yeah, re- go ahead. The Proverbs <clears throat> thing. Proverbs as wisdom literature, like one of the stupidest contradictions that gets pointed out in the Bible by angry atheists is, and this is not, I'm not Scott, this is Zach. Just go. Is one Proverbs, I don't remember the exact spot, but it's answer a fool according to his folly. Right. And the next one says, don't answer a fool according to his folly. Because it's wisdom literature. There's a time and a place to know how to apply these things. And Proverbs doesn't always give us that answer. So your proverb, there, there's a time and a place for open rebuke, I'm sure. Um, but Matthew 18 is Jesus talking, um, according to the red letters in this Bible, dealing with the sins in the church. If your brother or sister sins, go ahead, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector, which just means, okay, they're not one of you. Pagan is just like anybody that's not Jewish in that time. So, and and that seems he doesn't mean literal brother and sister. And that's the part that I was like, I don't want us to get hung up on that. It's not just, oh, are you fitting within the confines of the church? Whoever that person is. And so that that's where I think, if we're going to get to this part, maybe maybe Mark Driscoll is playing 4D chess <laughs> <laughs> because he does have a book coming out and how uh, what interesting timing it is that all of a sudden he's actually... Now going to be in the... Actually, I, I looked at it. it. It came out last year. Oh, it did? But it was the day after this, Mark posted and jumped on this viral wave and was like, I talk about this in my book. So so the point is, yes, I think it's totally fine for Mark to rebuke John Lindell. He, he should go to him first. Talk to him. They have some sort of relationship already. It gets described. I've seen it in follow-ups. It gets described. The thing is, I don't really see him as rebuking mark lindell john lindell i'm sorry john lindell i don't see him rebuking john lindell john lindell has not done anything except be a pastor to james river well no it's his deal it's his church he owns it it's his church he's got to own he's got to own the pole i get it and he's and i'm (laughs) like this comes back to the lazy vetting (laughs) almost snuck by you almost snuck that by me andy he's got to own the pole yeah but i I don't think this is um rebuke. John Lindell has not sinned. This person that's on stage has done something that's creating a very bad visual, and and it's it can bring up a a devilish spirit that is not good for men. It's like how is this helpful? So you don't think that Mark should have gone and talked to John. You would not want Zach to come and no. talk to you before. Is there a better way that it could have been done? If there's something that happens that goes wrong in a church, you but, don't want them to go talk to the pastor about it first. It depends on what proportion we're talking about. This was a big proportion. Like, Okay. Can we go to the next, um, just to, to move it along? This is later on in the conference, and they seem to kiss and make up. Oh. Metaf- metaphorically, yeah, they brought him back. They didn't. They didn't actually kiss each other. They tore the shirts off. They're both on stage together. He's submitting. I apologize to you for not going that route, which would have led us from the most awkward moment in the history of any men's event. See, they have a relationship. Yeah, they do. They're friends. Yeah. And I don't, I mean, if I were you, I wouldn't let me speak again. That's <laughs> 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 
because he knows yeah, good. John yeah. allows people to do whatever they want on stage. And no, you don't want to have Mark there because he's going to call you out. Well, clearly he doesn't let anyone do what they want on stage because he yanked him off pretty quickly there. But, but if Mark, Mark had been shortless <laughs> and attempting to climb up a pole... But Mark didn't agree with you. Would... Mark just, just said right there, I should have gone to you first, John. And like, You were the authority in this situation, and, and I should yes, have your house. Out yeah, and then after the fact, he goes after Lindell. He goes after Lindell. Like there, that that is that is like let me let me try and heal your conference here. But when this is over, I'm going to continue to bring this because this is wrong. Well, we said Mark gonna mark. Mark is gonna mark, and according to Lindell, so I think it was the next Wednesday. Actually, what does the next uh, window say? If you want to pull that up, <laughs> is that Code Orange Revival? Oh no, there's a quote there that that maybe you can read. Dave can get some mic time. Oh man, we're asking a lot of Dave right now. <laughs> you really are. The uh, highlighted part. Yeah, you can put it up on the screen too. No one will be able you... to see it. It's in our chart. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Soon afterwards, however, the two men appeared on stage and seemed to reconcile. Yet Lindell said last night that Driscoll had sub subsequently contacted Lindell's adult son David Lindell and urged him to oust his parents and brother from leadership. At James River, currently John and Debbie Lindell serve as lead pastor at James River, but their sons David and Brandon Brandon are slated to take over leadership <laughs> in the near future. What Mark has done at this point was so erroneous. John Lindell told his congregation, attempting to tear down the leadership of the church, attempting to create doubt and friction between brothers, attempting to sow discord between a father and son. It seems the not demonic to me. I don't know if it's demonic, but it's a dick move. That's for sure. I think if if that's yeah. true, I think if demonic demonic is what happened on stage. I think they sh this is inexcusable. They're both throwing the demonic language, uh, and what and what Mark Driscoll did in calling them out. I think it's appropriate, and and I I hope that he, like in uh, so is he being first, disingenuous? First, first Corinthians sixteen fourteen. Check your motives. Let let everything be done in love. I don't I obviously would have to have the conversation like with Mark Driscoll like is this done in love you have a friend here you're you know this is his conference you're calling things out on stage yes he wasn't preaching uh you know wasn't anybody else it was this person that yes they have a a a history that it's like okay they were a stripper but they're a Christian now. Their life has changed. However, they're on stage and they're doing similar things. So it's a little it's weird. Like, uh, it's a little odd. Well, they so th there's many more details, but for the whatever record this <laughs> this is, uh, Alex, the the guy, the dancer, the the sword swallower, he said John defended him, saying he's a Christian. He has kids. He's a family. He's trying man. to protect him. Turns out he doesn't have kids. He You're is kidding. He is married. Um, but no kids yet, and he's he was baptized as Eastern Orthodox, so he's basically. It sounds like he's just like culturally Christian, like kind of like oh yeah, I was baptized in the Catholic Church, like Eastern Orthodox. You get baptized as a no. baby, yeah. Um, and so, you know, the, he Wait, his John's, culture. John said he had he has like he has he's a family man. Yeah, yeah. He tried to create that and, tone, and then the the um the swords the acrobat sword swallower. <laughs> Alex, I'll just try to say Alex. Um, the non-family man. Because he's not a stripper. It it came right. up not in the past. In the past, he had been a dancer Everybody's for men and women. Everybody's got yeah. their crap. And so, uh, but John Lindell ended up apologizing to the church during a sermon that everyone can look up if they feel like it. But I have a quote from John apologizing for having Mark at the conference and apologizing for having Alex, the uh, sword swallower. At this, every time I say sword swallower, man. Why? Why apologize for that having what you had as your opening? Maybe we'll get a little context. At the same time, I want to be clear. I want to apologize and let you know I take full responsibility for the decision that was made to invite Mark Driscoll and Alex Magala to the Stronger Men's Conference. I am deeply saddened by the division that our invitation has brought to the body of Christ. That was never our intent. 
The Stronger Men's Conference is about reaching men for Jesus Christ, and it will continue to be about reaching men for Jesus Christ. And ever since then, he's also said that I didn't receive any texts, any messages, anything from anybody that was at the conference that was negative or anything. Yeah, I don't know. I, and, and, I, but I he's apologizing you. for having the sword swallower. Because it became a spectacle. Like I, I think there Then could... why apologize for something that you stood behind and someone called you out for? Because he... It was just because it was public? Because there's a swath of destruction that's being created, including Mark undercutting his... Like, if then why wouldn't John just own it and take and and create neut- a neutral vibe? Why does he have to push back on Driscoll? Like, Be- because, okay, so if it's true, let's try to... Is, if, it, is it his ego and Jeff, he's embarrassed? Okay. What? You're dialed up and you're interrupting me like four times in a row as I'm in mid-sentence, and that's okay. But I want to ask a question. Like, it is if it's true, the quote that Dave read about Mark contacting the son to try to get them out, <coughs> interfering in their specific church, is that okay? I don't know. I think that's... You think it might be okay to undercut the dad and go behind his back to his son? I don't know if it's like you, you guys are... Your family... You, supposedly you're going to be taking over and you're responsible for all of these people. You need to get this person out of here because they're, they've brought something to the church that is not good. And if you want something that's viable, that's holy, please get in there now. Forget that it's his father. Get in there now and clear the path and have a fresh start and, and go or else James river is going to fall apart that I, sounds dramatic i think that's where driscoll's coming from i mean it just sounds dramatic so where where's the line where do you draw that line so How, you obviously don't think that he should have done it you think it's like undermining their church evil is happening but let's let it go how about this and he's even has, apologized has for the it. has the extent of the way that this went down been unifying or divisive the person on stage has completely the, divisive. Has the event the event that happened has it been unifying or or divisive? This whole this whole event include all the things, the extra interactions. Is this is this divisive or unifying? Unifying to who? Un, un- anybody. I, I don't know. Pick pick somebody. The, de- the the okay. hold, hold on, hold okay. on. Don't don't change this topic because ja- okay, I'm gonna stay on the same James five James five twenty. Whoever turns a sinner from their error of their way will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. The point being is if they continue down this path, if they continue to like we become lazy, if that's the case, and we don't vet, and we just allow s- this stuff to happen and creep into people's minds and lives then you've created the divisiveness yourself. It's not that Mark Driscoll came in. Why are we blaming the person who's calling it out? Why does that happen in this society? No, Here's exactly why. It's not what he did, it's how he did it. And that's the point. That's why Matthew gets brought up. Is It is because the way he did it is the most divisive way, and it has sprung off this firestorm of additional divisiveness. John Lindell, by the way, read those text messages in his church from Mark Driscoll. Which is dumb. Now we- Yeah, ha- divisive or not? Com- yeah, I, I Completely. I That's I what I'm saying. You spark divisiveness. So, d- it, no one is- a, Lindell no couldn't one is own a, it at the beginning. He would not own it. Because he apologized of, it for later, but he won't own it stop. at the beginning. Because of the way that it was handled. So when you put someone on the defensive automatically in public and pull their pants down, they're going to fight back automatically. That's what happens. It's a normal reaction. It's a different- Instead of saying, hold on, we have a relationship. I respect you. I had a problem with what happened up there. I don't need to air this out in front of everybody else first. Let's have a discussion man to man. One could make the argument that it's a bitch move for Mark Driscoll to go out and do that in front and say, dude, how more disrespectful could you be? And then, and then it seems like he's talking out both sides of his mouth. 
Mark how Driscoll. more how more disrespectful could you be to put a man on stage, have him take his shirt off, swallow through? Jeff, I, no, you're I'm not hung getting up past on it. it. I don't. I, I, no one. I'm hung no up one's on arguing it? against that. No, they're not. No one's arguing right. that that was inappropriate. No one Sorry, is arguing that I'm more, side. I'm more a Mark Driscoll than a John Lindell who hides and is then apologizes later. I, I think both of them. Well, Mark did that too. He went and hid and then came back and apologized. Yeah, he later was trying too. to protect his. He was trying to protect his friend John Lindell's conference. Do we need to take well, sides? It didn't, it didn't sound like he was trying to protect his conference if he got up there first and made that statement. He was no, but after the fact, in the moment, so he's talking out of both the, sides of his mouth during the conference. He's he's he said I did this the wrong way. He's going let like I know this was the opening of your conference and then I was the second day and I was going to speak and you kicked me off stage let me come back out so you guys can finish your your conference I don't want to ruin that but now I'm going to continue to rail against what has happened here so did was Mark being was he being untruthful when he said I shouldn't have said it that way I should have come and talked to you first was Mark Driscoll lying he he's trying to soften the blow was he lying when he said what? When he said, D- "I'm the- sorry." When they had the two of them on stage, he came back and said, "I shouldn't have done it that way. I should have come to you first and talked to you about this." As the spiritual authority in the house, I recognize that spiritual authority, and I'm under it. I should have come to you. Which I I have problems with that. Whatever, whatever. whatever. I have a problem Regardless, with that as well. Who cares? He's not the spiritual authority. Was he lying? Was Mark well, Driscoll he's the pastor of that church? Mark, Mark. It seemed like it was. They were so lying? close to making it work. Either Mark is lying in in that scenario, and he shouldn't have done it, or I should or, have. Sorry. I should have come to you as a friend and maybe like, hey, like. But biblically, I'm calling you out. This I'm calling this whole thing out publicly, so people who are the thousands of people that are here, they're not looking at this at like, yeah, because. But what, so did Mark Driscoll lie to him on stage again later, when he when Mark Driscoll said I did it the wrong way. It depends on what context. If you're talking about the conference, we or you're saw talking the about context. John? He came up on the con- in the conference the next day and apologized in front of all of the stadium of men and said I did it the wrong way. I should have come and talked to you. Is Mark Driscoll lying when maybe, he says that? Maybe he did. All right. So does that invalidate? <laughs> like at one point now, do we go okay? N- n- that if we t- sin if- once, are we just sinners? Well, that's what you're saying with John Lindell, who messed up by putting by having a lapse of judgment but and he letting was res- someone on. But he stage. was responsible for thousands of men seeing this. And how many millions have seen Mark Driscoll? In what? In this and a lot of other things. Yeah, but we're just talking about this moment. So I'm saying, <coughs> go back to my first question. I'll answer it. Final lap. This is the Final mo- lap. This is the most divisive thing that could have happened possibly here. Mark Driscoll is responsible for the divisiveness. John Lindell is responsible for the divisiveness. I don't agree. They both own this, and and neither of them are helping the situation, and it makes Christians look like shit in a very public stage for lots of different reasons Boo-hoo. now. Boo-hoo. Christians look, like, look bad. Boo-hoo. The divisiveness happened when the devil wait, was put on stage, taking their shirt off, swallowing a sword what at a men's you, conference. What do you mean? Wait, 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 hold, hold on. Christians look bad. The divisiveness, divisiveness happened when what? Did you say the devil? The divisiveness happened when you put a man on stage at a men's Is conference. Is that what you said the first time? Did you say? Did I mishear you? Did you say the devil? When the devil was on the stage. You, it's like a devilish spirit. Is that what you said though? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure I heard that correctly. So um, is what? But the problem here is that you have one problem <laughs> compounding. Yes, there's an issue there. Like we said, no one here thinks that was a great idea. You're driving <laughs> him to the drink. Okay. No one. No one says it's a great idea. <laughs> it's followed by another poor choice. Followed by another poor choice. Followed by another poor choice. And yes, actually, I do think it matters. <laughs> what people's perceptions are of Christians because that is how they may or may not hold, hold, have on, a Jeff. Cha- hold on have a chance to engage with who Jesus actually is. So if we project something and broadcast it that Christians are a bunch of divisive assholes who do stupid things and make poor choices. Completely. We completely do that. So why why is that okay? Why should we not care about that? We 
We do care. You just said you didn't care. N- no, I said we do do that. Dave, rewind the tape. <laughs> Dave, pass me the talking pillow, bro. It's not that we don't. Pass to Zach. It's, it's not you that said we, you didn't care. You said, no, so what? It's not that we don't care. It's that we do care. And these things happen all the time. It's the fact of like being present and calling it out. Yes, if yeah, it was just an individual, this is not an individual thing. This was a massive public thing to talk to John. Would John's going to go out there and be like, uh, maybe I don't, you think, don't know. I don't, I don't Maybe, maybe, maybe you said, you know what? I don't think Mark knew. I think what? from 30 minute conversation that they had before he let's, went out there, they're like, I let's don't know. imagine the best. Scenario. We don't know. Let's imagine the best scenario. We don't know. The best scenario is <laughs> Mark, goes, goes, Mark John goes, goes and talk to him. John, and John says, you know what? You're right. Hold on. Let's go up together. Hey, we had a really good conversation about this. This didn't turn out the way that any of us were thinking. I wasn't paying attention. We don't feel good about this, by the way. That's a great response to it. And they both share that on the stage. But there was no chance for that to happen. And now you have bad decision by bad decision and Christians shit-talking each other on, on broadcast all over the world. There's a million YouTube reaction videos. We are now one of them. <laughs> do you, do you okay. think... Um, do you think that uh, if if Mark Driscoll sees a man eating a banana, does he have to like avert his eyes? <laughs> Asking for a friend. Um, also, do we have to take sides? Like to me, it's like can't everyone be full of shit in this scenario? Can't there be like mistakes on all sides? I feel like there's a little bit of like that's my point. Um, it's okay. all going south. Because I actually okay. agree. I, I agree it. with the pushback from from Mark Driscoll. I just want it to be like okay, this maybe the sword swallowing moment is. <laughs> is the straw that broke the camel's back of like, we don't need this spectacle. We can let the message of like redemption and forgiveness and like realizing that's true about your life and now how you can live more freely and experience the things that God wants you to experience. Like that's apparently not good enough because make it, this is like consumer Christianity dialed up to 11 where it's like, we got to have the experience and it probably got ahead of their skis. Like I, I guarantee you, John, well, he obviously re- regrets it, but it's like, maybe like I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. They didn't vet it. It was a mistake. And right and now- And we don't even know that. No, we don't know that, but we got Mark doing the thing he did. They seem to make up. And then apparently, allegedly, Mark is undercutting his authority at the church, and then he's reading text messages from Mark on church. It's it looks it's a shitstorm. It, now it's catty. It looks stup- it's yes. catty. It's everyone looks bad in this now. Everybody looks bad. And I'm fibbing when I'm like, yeah, Mark's. I don't know if he's lying. He's 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 bsing on the moment to try and protect John's conference. He's he's doing that, but he's doing that like a little public relations, like. Ee. Yeah, this is this is heavy, but you had this happen, so let me try and protect this so you can keep on with your conference because it was at the beginning of the conference. I, I just feel like Mark's like a moth to the flame. He goes, he's like, "This is what I should do. I should come back the next day and we'll apologize and do that." And he goes home and he's in his like <laughs> hotel room. And I was like that night, he's sitting there, he's going like, "His rage, his rage I can't monster." Do it. I got, <laughs> rage monster rage texting all over the place you gotta leave you gotta okay. Undercut him. okay i do have an example very it's a couple minutes of um this was back in 2012 and somebody actually brought it up recently um do we have the uh code orange revival <laughs> okay don't click it yet Okay. You can bring it up though, Dave, and get yeah. it prepped. So this is Stephen Furtick. He has Elevation Church, and he this was back in 2012, and it got brought up recently. Is that the um, first window? There's two of them from Co- Code Orange. Make sure um, it's the one it's on the, the left. It starts at the six six. Oh, you won't even have that. <coughs> anyway, Stephen Furtick, um, what he believes, he's pretty much a would we say a prosperity gospel. Like God wants God's Manifest. all God's all about you it's, and you being wealthy and you having a great life and you like he's like a not on the nose prosperity preacher but it's it's there there's and some also, manifesting by the way I don't know if he shows up in these clips but this is definitely pre steroids Stephen Furtick because he is a skinny <laughs> yes. young man oh uh, pull okay stick it up there <laughs> okay so this is this, Matt Chandler so this saying. is Matt Chandler so oh. um right. Maybe a year before that, they had this thing called the Elephant Room, and they had Matt Chandler, Stephen Furtick, um, the who's the Harvest Church, Greg Laurie, Greg Laurie? And Mark Driscoll was there as well, and a couple other pastors, all the sociopaths, yeah, who just happened to be fired over the last you know ten years from their Francis churches. Francis Chan was he there? Uh, no, um, but they 
the conversation between them was like Matt Chandler was about growing growing attendees, and Stephen Furtick was about growing attendance, and so there's this like war of like Matt Chandler's like we need to grow people in the Bible, and right. Stephen Furtick's like we need to grow people, we need to grow attendance in church, and he is pretty much the Bible is about me, God set it up all up for me, and then since he had this relationship, Matt Chandler was invited to Stephen Furtick's Elevation Church for Code Orange Revival, and Matt Chandler's pretty much on stage at his church calling him out. At Stephen Furtick's church. Okay. At Stephen yeah. Furtick's church. Let's watch it. Go ahead with you uh, and at certain points that might be painful but I promise you uh, I'm here for your joy I, I wouldn't have got on a plane I, I wouldn't have left my beautiful babies I, I wouldn't have uh, thought and prayed and fasted about whether or not even to be here if I didn't feel like I was supposed to come here for your joy so I, I am not against your joy I'm for your joy but listen to me <laughs> don't clap too soon happiness. because happiness and joy are not the same thing you get that okay, pause right? it all right, because happiness. Okay, so Stephen Furtick pretty much is like, God wants you to be happy. And Matt Chandler's like, it is not about happiness. You are not, God did not create you for that. He created you for this joy to live and uh, just be in God's splendor. Continue. Also, um, I'm pretty sure he didn't need to fly there on a plane. He, with his arm motions, he <laughs> almost could fly there himself. <laughs> Chandler is six seven, and he uses his arms second. violently. Uh, he slide the mouse over. Had a Dave. day that was unbelievably happy. The weather was perfect. It wasn't a night. You're standing out there trying not to die. All right, but but ultimately, you've had a day. You've had a moment. You've had a season where there was this exponential amount of happiness in your life. But ultimately, you don't control happiness. Uh, it takes one comment, one smart alecky um, jab, uh, one thing to go wrong, one stupid one podcast in your car, uh, one person at your work. All it takes is one thing, and your happiness is gone. So look at me. I, I am not interested in boosting, encouraging, or helping your happiness because I believe it's cheap, and I believe it will not sustain you for the journey that God has you on. So what I am for and what I am after is your joy. And, and sometimes getting to joy stings. And so if some of this stings tonight, know that ultimately I come as an ambassador of Christ for your joy. And so with that okay, said, stop it there. Uh, let's get to work. Is there a we, second? We have... This is a second clip, yeah? But you guys... I'm making Dave work for his okay. paycheck tonight. <clears throat> but ultimately... Okay. The next window. Yes, yeah, this, this next is Matt Chandler at... Stephen Furtick's church calling him out on stage at his own revival because he's like, you're like, it's all about me. It's all about God. Unless he came to Stephen Furtick first, potentially he's doing it the unbiblical way. Let's see it. Let's let the clip speak. Potentially. What is God doing? What is God about? What is the mission of God ultimately? Uh, it's been my experience that if you gather um, non-believers, they have a whole list of things that they do. And don't, well, what, what God's after is he doesn't he want me to do that and he doesn't want me to do this and I better not do this and if I do this, I'll probably get this. And, and they've got kind of this Greek, Romanian, Zeus-like picture where if you break the rules, you get lightning bolted. And, and that's kind of what they think about what God's doing. He's it's also all Santa. over the Old He's Testament. but making a we'll list. Continue. He's checking it twice and that's who he is and then if you talk to um, a lot of evangelicals their their misconception is just as bad this and the is Stephen Furtick is that ultimately God is all about us and 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 he's about me and the whole thing exists because of me and so God was lonely in the beginning and so what he did is he created me for fellowship because who wouldn't want to create a bunch of incompetent, non-loving, adulterous, idolatrous, oh, he's such a good disobedient Baptist. children to call their own. And nobody's going to say it that way, but that's what we're saying. Okay, stop. So what's God doing? God's working. So yeah, God, he is, he is definitely, I remember hearing this sort of back in 2012, this was? Yep. So closely after that, I I was listening to a lot of Chandler mm -hmm. and, and, uh, I was so pumped that he he didn't directly mention Ferdict or this is Ferdict. Right. And this is about you. 
By the way, if Pastor Driscoll, can he say Furtick? Because Dick's in the word. But um, I used to love the fact that he <laughs> called him out indirectly. Like it wasn't specific. He didn't totally do it. But to anybody that knows anything about Stephen Furtick and Elvin yeah. Church, that's what it, that's what was going on. That's but, his jam. But so after that, he then later on in his message he says, and here God is pretty much for God and like glorifying glorifying God and glorifying God. Like he goes through verse and verse and verse and mm-hmm. verse, and he's schooling really a young uh, Elevation Church who's not getting any biblical truth. They're just getting like a hype man. Like they're getting bite sized. Do you stuff. like well, do you like money? Yes. Do you like Snicker bars? Yes. Like that is It's a little more Stephen than that. I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I know. I don't I <coughs> I I am pushing back a little bit because He's a hype man. He Steve. made you defense Stephen Furtick. I know. Look what he's did to you. Fuck yeah. you, Jeff. Sure. Yeah. This is the worst. <laughs> but to go, I've ba- had to defend Mark Driscoll and Stephen <laughs> Furtick on this podcast. I'm going to go home and quit. But I f- I'm fired. The the to go back to their conversation a year before that, which is where pew, he pew, pew, connect- pew, pew, pew. Sorry, pew pew. Where he connects with um, where Stephen Furtick and Matt Chandler connect. They really only saw each other on youtube and seeing a few things and so matt chandler and stephen furtick go have a discussion argument they go both sides and admittedly matt chandler's like i'm rooted here and furtick is like i want to reach the people who are far away and bring them to jesus and we have lots of uh, I baptisms mi- i don't mind the way that he did that by the way, that that actually didn't that didn't bother me because he present he was presenting the ideas to allow them to kind of like exist on their own. I, I it's a little bit hard because I don't know if there was like a if he was like referencing specific parts of what Furtick oh, had just said. He's referencing what Furtick preaches, but it's it's indirect enough to where it's like, oh, is this? I'm I'm of two minds of this. Like I'm with you. There's a difference where it's not super specific. He's not directly undercutting Stephen's authority. At the same time, it could be classif- filed under passive aggressive. Passive aggressive. Furtick does get up afterwards and actually speak a little to it in the same kind of fashion of like people have different views, and you know, hey, we're all about bringing in different views. And Matt Chandler's like, no, this is the path. And yeah. Furtick's like, I want to bring everybody, and I'm not going to preach, you know, the Bible so much. But I am going to preach the Bible. But I really just want that doesn't you know, bother this. me as much. That approach doesn't bother me as much. <clears throat> but it's still calling. It is. I mean, it has been said by many, many, many people who have done breakdowns, and Stephen Furtick even knows. Like in their conversation on the, the yeah. elephant, whatever it was, elephant room, uh, that it's like, yeah, we don't see eye to eye, but we're still wanting people to be baptized and come to Jesus. And Matt Chandler's pretty much like, yeah, but you're gonna. You're leaving someone, you're leaving like a 40 year old man uh, breastfeeding like a little boy. He hasn't even, he hasn't grown up. You're not growing people up. You're just bringing them in and baptizing them. And then what? It's like, and the kick, the pushback was, well, Matt Chandler, maybe you have people that are coming to your church that are already kind of been no, with I the church. It. I get it. The details of what they disagree on matters less to me. And I don't, and I don't think that's what you're trying to point out. It's I'm not pointing the de- out that he's calling, he is calling him out on his own stage. There's a precedence for rebuke. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? There, yeah. Yeah. There is. And I'm trying to like, I don't know if I'm it's correct, to, but I, there is a precedence. It's, uh, it's, it's for whatever it reason, that, that as one, public as, this because it did get a lot of play like oh man matt chandler called out stephen furtick at his own conference like that was the thing back then and here we are like oh mark driscoll called out this in the middle of john lindell's you know i get what you're saying i understand what you're saying it it does feel different to me It, it it just does because it's not so on the nose he didn't go to him he but, wasn't kicked off stage in the middle of his speech. He wasn't kicked off stage in the middle of his speech. Well, he that, was, that's he a big deal. Him, he called him an uh, well. He called him an uh, well. A John Lindell probably feels like he has a bigger reputation 
and Stephen Furtick's just like, we're bringing in these auxiliary pastors to, you know, be a part of the code because I want to have an open, you know, like kind of an open mic. Everybody gets to, you know, I invited them here. And so then they come out and say what they say. And there's like, yeah, I don't believe what you believe. And here's what I believe. And these people need to know that go to your church. They are getting misled. I, get, I, I totally understand your point. I'm still saying it just feels this one feels different to me. Okay, it, it does. You know, um, what one thing that jumped out to me though is the way he describes like, oh, who'd want to create a selfish line? Like he goes into like the piece of shit, total cube. depravity, yeah. total depravity, the totaliest of depravities. Because he's a he's probably a tulip guy. I'm he's a, probably a five point Calvinist, and total tulip is total depravity. <laughs> and pm word um but total depravity is like you are what language was that Andy? you are total i was speaking in tongues you're total shit you're total shit you can't do anything <laughs> but uh that jumped out at me it's like wow that's a little bit sad and it's it, hyperbolic and it's straw man and, and so what would have been great is those two guys should have had a they should have had a debate where they hold hands the whole time <laughs> they, sh- they should have like had a conversation that's it, it. but that's- as long as that's not too gay jeff yeah they should have we had- didn't take our shirts off oh is that the marker did it sure is oh, don't come with me to the beach because i take the shit off my shirt and what? i have to avert you have my shit eyes on, you have shit on your, <laughs> you got shit on your shirt that's disgusting <laughs> i i hope that dave you- you're hired i hope you take the shit off your shirt when you go to the beach oh my gosh there is like uh, gosh just this i don't even want to know what you're consuming why 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 oh my gosh i heard about a a hoarder (laughs) that uh liked to hoard poop anyway and and it was part of their diet we are going to edit that out yeah no okay well we should probably gear towards landing i think we we just did open the landing gear so that we can land (laughs) it feels like it. this Uh, emergency landing (laughs) but uh any any final buttons you want to put on like i i actually loved how this got i knew it was gonna be amped it's up good it's good i have no problem with dis- disagreeing or rebuking people but <laughs> rock paper scissors. rock paper scissors bitch i lost <laughs> i have no problem with that clearly <laughs> but I think that the the reason that Jesus lays out that that way to go about it is because it offers the chance for reconciliation and uh, people to be humble and receive re- rebuke and to do this in a way that doesn't cause division. And in the, in this context, if Mike, <laughs> let's play the ignorance card. Mike Lin, Mike Lindell. Literally, Are we rewinding it again? No, no. But, but John. It, John. John Lindell. Mike Lindell's the my pillow guy. Thank you. Ah! That's why. <laughs> That's why we keep doing it. Oh, it's so good. We got Mark and Mike and John. Our spell. Our, it's our not spencer. our fault. But in this context, <laughs> Mike Lindell, th- if you want to sponsor us, like you can sponsor us. <laughs> I don't think you have any money left. I got bronchitis I, yeah, on this he might not. episode. Dang it. But the Jesus way of doing it is like, hey, go go behind the scenes first because if it is ignorance, maybe the person's like, oh shit, I didn't know. Yeah, I let's let's cut this out. Let's. But those relationships are done the now. Bud. Those relationships are done. Yeah, like the, those guys. If they, it, it seemed like they had something before. It's gone. I hope not. It's gone. I don't. I'm not putting that. I'm not going to cut that off and say that that's completely done. I don't I'll circumcise that relationship. It's like a marriage that's dead, and then all of a sudden it arises, and people are like what. So if those two come together and they do another conference, maybe, probably not though. I don't think like I don't. So I don't look at this as like, oh, that's a gay <laughs> moment and that shouldn't have happened because it's gay. It was, um, and that's where we'll disagree. But uh, I just look at that's that's like maybe a a good example of just let's just get the spectacle. The whole model of mega churching, consumer Christianity, giant church spectacle. It's like let's be better than that. <clears throat> I think we can do better, and um, I, th- I think this. I, I I think we all agree on that. Yeah, that's all John I, had to say. I don't like the way it was done, and uh, could have been Mark better. Driscoll. I, it's unfortunate. Like 
I, I, I agree with him pushing back. I don't know if I agree with him doing it in the moment the way he did. Because um, it doesn't feel right. But hopefully this like... Right? It doesn't feel right. Because the Lord said it. Because it didn't align because with what the Lord feel... Jesus Christ, the savior of your black, black, depraved heart. Hermeneutics. No, the way he did Andy. it, th- he should have done it before. They had a conversation right before. And I, I'm not going to do laps around that again, but... Get off the starting so, line. I suppose it doesn't feel right, but I think there are good reasons behind it other than feelings, Jeff. <laughs> like the words of Jesus. <laughs> All right. I'm consuming... Uh, <laughs> I am consuming uh, something with my... It, oh, Palm Royale. We're done. First season. Maybe there's more. It's Kristen Wiig. It's fun. And Palm it's, Royale. Palm Royale. What is the elevator pitch for that show? Um... High society club back in the 40s, uh, trying to hold your station and protect your high uh, class, yeah, protect what's yours and just stay, uh, as a person of someone who's all about reputation, yeah. And I'm this a, is avail- I'm a VIP. This is available on what Apple, it's good, it's fun. It's fun. Chris Wig uh, is great. The Ricky Martin, the singer, is actually plays a massive role in it. There's a bunch of actors in it. Um, but you know he's gay, right? And he plays a gay, gay part. <laughs> and he he kisses a man. But I think you need to do that now to get the money from whoever's running things in Hollywood. Okay. <laughs> they waited until the very last episode to actually have a kissing scene. They're like, okay, good. We're done. Well, speaking of same sex kissing, I've been watching Ted Lasso <clears throat> season three. And mm. it's, oh, God. See, they the did final, same thing. Final season. It's, this is the final season so far. I don't think there's any other after that. But yeah, dude, I, feel, I feel like every season they got new writers and they just it's lost not, the magic. It's not good. Um, it always ends and, woke. And the acting. The overacting is like getting, it's getting worse. The writing was terrible on that last season. And the, the soccer was always bad because none it's of them were extra so- bad. Uh, sorry, the football, but uh, the European football. But uh, it was, uh, I'm saying a lot. The writing was bad. The first season, the writing was really good. And you could, the soccer was the vehicle to have this story play out. And it was, first season was brilliant. So that's been disappointing, but yeah. you know what has not been? Shogun. That is show good. <laughs> <laughs> You've been waiting the entire episode to say that. Oh my gosh. It is good. I I I'm in, I'm digging it. And it has subtitles, so you cannot like look away at your phone <laughs> or do. lose track. I did that once and I'm like, ah crap, I gotta, gotta back go it up back. here and like wait, this is on what? It's on Hulu. Okay, you gotta send me your uh, username. Uh, and password. <laughs> Yeah, that's a lot. It's good though. Feudal Japan and uh, and it's when the English and the Portuguese are like kind of trying vying to get the, into the uh, into the Japanese merchant system so that they can take advantage of the trading there. So you yeah. have the Catholics versus the Protestants, and there's also Catholics versus Protestants amongst the Japanese because some of the and missionaries Bo- and Buddhists and Buddhists. Okay. It's yeah. good. It's really good. And there's a lot of head chopping. <laughs> I told, now that you mentioned that, I totally forgot. When we finished that series, we st- I started watching Franklin. I watched like three or four episodes, you know, back in you know in England and it's uh, just America like began. Franklin. No, 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 with samurai swords. Yeah, <laughs> right. That's <laughs> the same. Pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Anyway, sounds good. I can't wait to get the show good. Oh, it's times. It is show good. <laughs> All right, Zach. Uh, so I think I've mentioned Fargo a couple times. We done a couple seasons of that in different orders which you can do because every season is could you do this in a fargo accent its own season oh yeah don't you know i can do that part don't you know Uh, put him in the wood chipper uh just a little bit that was irish but (laughs) well it feels like there's a little bit of like it's not that far off (laughs) it's not that far off i had some potatoes with that but i I liken it to the the show is like when a good, a band covers a song and they kind of remix, they do it in a way that's like, oh, I like the way they did that. Yeah. Every season of Fargo is like that because it's the same basic story in a different time period, always in Minnesota. Uh, 
But if you've seen the movie, it's the same elements. They're just kind of rearranged a little bit in a way that every season is un- unique and fresh, which is fun. Also Shogun doing that. And I I love the subtitle. It's not all in subtitles. Shogun is? It's not some, completely. It's <sighs> some yeah. subtitles. It's, it's Franklin's okay. like that too. I'm like, I'm missing the actual people. I got to look down, read, I go back. But that's okay. It, really? it forces you to be in it, like uh. Andy was saying. And there's there's been multiple times where like, Lisa and I have like, okay, pause it real quick because I got to look at, check an email or I got a text from my daughter or whatever it is. It's like, okay, I know we have to stop this so that we can be present for this. Yeah, it's good. And it's a good, it's good storytelling. And then reading currently uh, Romans for Normal People, speaking of Romans, um, on Kindle, which is by Daniel Kirk. Was that sent to you by Cam? No, I wish it was, but... Cam, check out Romans for Normal People and uh, let me know what you think. So you read about the Bible, but from other people's thoughts. He reads about other people reading the Bible. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Which actually, I think it's useful to to read from Bible scholars because they know a lot more than I do about the original text and language in in a way that if I'm reading it in just my English, I'm going to get what I need to get out of it. Mm. And there's a time and a place for that. There's a time and a place for devotional reading. But if you're going to... If you're going to read the Bible like this is the authority, I want to know exactly what was going on in the original context, and that the, it's a user-friendly entry into Bible scholarship um, in that book of Romans. Nice, neat. <laughs> well, are we done? I'm I think done. So. Okay, rosebiblesbeer at gmail.com and all the socials at Bros Bibles and Beer and for Zach, Jeff. I'm Andy. Grace? Peace. Cheers. Cheers.